You're listening to Long Distance. I'm Paula Mordo. Long Distance is a podcast about stories in the Filipino diaspora. I host and produce it along with my fellow producer and our resident voice actor, Patrick Pino. Hey, Patrick. What's up? On the show, we ask questions like... What does it mean to be Filipino outside the homeland? To grow up there and have to leave it? Or what if you've never been there at all? Thanks, Patrick. No problem. We do that a lot on the show. Anyway, part of the reason I ask these questions is because of, well, my long-distance story. That's me, age nine, Aww. red. Okay, for some context, I was born in Los Angeles, but I spent most of my childhood growing up in Manila, Philippines, and for a few years, my family and I lived in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We moved back to Manila a few years later, and then when I was 15, my parents told me, we're moving to America, to an exotic suburb just east of San Francisco called... San Ramon. Exactly. (laughs) And in case you're wondering, those watermarks on the photos are there on purpose. Shout out stock photos. Yes, and I am not, Patrick and I are not from around here, but for you Boston folks, I would guess that San Ramon is kind of like, I don't know, any suburb here? (laughs) No, 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 yeah? Okay. No comment. (laughs) All right. Anyway, that is me in the black, visiting my friends at school to say my final goodbyes. Cool uniforms. They're kind of dorky. This is the last time I see my friends before I hop on a plane to America. I'm nervous, but also pretty excited. Actually, when my dad tells me we're moving, he says, I need to do my best to assimilate, make friends with people of all backgrounds, kind of like I did in Malaysia, where I went to international school. But he tells me this in terms of hair color, like so. Young Paula. You should make friends with people with black hair, brown hair, blonde hair, red hair. Everyone. Like the United Colors of Benetton. Some people here remember that, right? (laughs) right. At the time, I'm like, okay, I can make different hair color friends. I actually grew up watching American movies and TV, so I'm ready. Turns out, I wasn't. life, high school is awkward and hard, especially when you move to a new high school in a totally different country. In San Ramon, I get called a FOB, F-O-B, fresh off the boat. I feel like I don't fit in because all the cool girls are white girls and they all wear thongs that peek out of their low-rise jeans, trucker hats, and extra thick black eyeliner. I don't. And when I meet my first friend, I panic. She's white. And I worry about how I'll find her the next day because, honestly, (laughs) all of the white people look exactly the same to me. (laughs) Moving to a new country is lonely, weird, hard, kind of funny, and I'm not the only person who's done it. Filipinos make up one of the largest diaspora populations in the world, and 10%, or about 10 million of the current Philippine population, live and work abroad as overseas Filipino workers, also called OFWs, or Bagong Bayani, meaning the new heroes of the Philippine economy. But this did not happen overnight. Filipinos have a long history of coming to America, of leaving the homeland in search of opportunity in a foreign one. And to get to all that, we have to go back in time. To the moment, everything changed. (laughs) Thank you for the uh, Wayne's World time travel sound effects, Patrick. No problem. So we're going back to 1521, the Philippines. Mabuhay. The Spanish arrived to colonize the Philippines. Filipinos fight back. Yeah. 
But later, the Spanish Empire rules for over 300 years. Damn. A 1898. The United States takes the Philippines from Spain and occupies the nation. Seriously? The U.S. takes over the Philippine school system, among other things, and American teachers teach young Filipinos English, and that America is the most modern, best country in the world, one where they can one day go to college and find better opportunities. Wow. America. <laughs> young Filipinos aspire to go to America in search of the American dream, like this guy. I was in inter intermediate school. They were lecturing in a school to Miss Murphy. She's an Irish girl. And Mrs. Jackson and Miss Huff. And uh, they were lecturing in America, you know. Blah, blah, this, blah, blah. This. My God, must be paradise over there. Just in my mind, it was someday I'm going to be there. If it takes me my lifetime, I'm going to be there. That man is part of the first big wave of Filipino immigrants, the Manung generation. Manung means older brother or uncle in the Filipino dialect Ilocano. The Manung generation comes to America in search of opportunity in the 1920s and 1930s. But they arrive during the Great Depression and face racism, low paying jobs, poor working conditions. Most can only find work as farm workers in the West Coast or as cannery workers in Alaska. Later, Filipinos arrive as nurses, engineers, teachers, servicemen, caregivers, domestic helpers. And today, there are various generations of Filipinos, just like other immigrant communities. In college, I learned about the 1.5 generation. It's a term that's been used to describe Vietnamese refugees who came to America as teenagers, but also Cuban Americans and Korean Americans. When I learned this, I felt I finally had a vocabulary describe my experiences as a 1.5 generation Filipino American. The awkwardness, the sadness, the feeling of being in between. Patrick, by the way, is second generation. You got that right. <laughs> but fast forward to the early 2000s. <laughs> in the early 2000s, I'm a teenager. I don't know any of this stuff, any of this history. They do not teach this in high school. I'm just a Filipino kid living in a small suburb in the San Francisco Bay Area, just trying to belong. I'm awkward and sad until I find my tribe, the drama kids. Oh, God damn. <laughs> and eventually I find my Filipino friends. That makes sense. Shout out Bay Area. And when I finally leave that small town for college and later a big city, I find other communities that help me learn about my identity, my community's history, my story as a Filipino American. Spoiler alert, I even make a podcast about it. Yeah, long distance, uh, longdistanceradio.com. Please subscribe. Thank you very much. It takes a while, but in time, all of that helps this kid finally feel at home. Do 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 do